Today, we have our ACBC Master Trainer, Mr. Jitendra Vyas with us. He is basically a structural engineer and also he has a PG diploma in urban planning and development. He is a trainer and evaluator for Biha Council. He has been practicing in green building sector as an energy consultant. He is an expert in health, institutional and housing projects. He has trained professionals, students and government officials across the country on ACBC and handled more than 150 sessions across India. We are extremely thankful to you, sir, for your presence here. I welcome Mr. Jitendra Vyas for the session. Over to you, sir. 7 I are you able to uh, listen to me and uh, uh, the slide envelope optimization is available before you? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> welcome back, everybody. So uh, another round of uh, simulation exercise. But uh, simultaneously, we would like to have uh, glimpses of the codal provision as well. So whatever we are going to put input uh, uh, inside the software, the terminology should be known to us. And why we are doing that, that we are, would like to uh, go for that. So we will be moving a little fast so that we can fo more focus on the simulation exercises rather than hunting for terminologies only. So uh, if you see that, uh, the compliance approach towards the documentation for the ECBC is uh, of two nature. One is basically the applicable components. We have seen the building envelope part, the first uh, part of that. Second is lighting and control we are seeing. Somewhere at other point of time, comfort system and electrical will be uh, discussed at other other days, some day. <laughs> We have seen that the battery requirements are required for all compliance methods. Whatever known with the M, that should be compliant. And every M, applicable M, there are a number of M's are there. So some of them are applicable, some of them are not applicable. So all that applicable metric requirement has to be fulfilled. And then you have got two methods to choose from. One is called the prescriptive method, another uh, which uh, comprises of trade-off method as well. And another one is the uh, simulation method that is called the whole building performance method. Uh, and the software program will be required, separate software program will be required to perform this whole building performance method. And almost 80 to 85% of buildings are to be trialed or necessary to be trialed or practically trialed on whole building performance method. Only for 15% type of smaller buildings, repetitive type of nature of floor plates, only those buildings are trialed on the prescriptive method. Otherwise, these methods are more preferable. Uh, for that, there are approved analytical tools. You have to choose uh, any one of them, and then you have to perform simulation for that. Uh, today, we are going to see the uh, approved one as well as the non-approved one, but they are popular ones so that we can have touch and feel, and then we, we can jump to the approved analytical tool. Most of the thing, approved analytical tools are uh, paid ones. So we'll go for everywhere, and then we'll see that uh, what is the procedure for that. Apart from that, the uh, output of these approved uh, tools, uh, there are certain formats are there. We would like to see the bottom. Uh, outcome of those formats would be uh, uh, has to be attached to the application format and what kind of application format we'll see just a glimpse of application format as well as the building and envelope sub uh, summary filled format so both are the i got a format for both of them we'll just have a glimpse of that so we'll just have a touch and feel that what kind of uh, new documentation procedure would be there for the ecpc compliance apart from that uh, what administrative requirement will be there apart from these uh, uh, simulation output uh, uh, result sheets uh, there will be a requirement of like something like uh, any narration regarding the uh, enforcement interpretation claim of exemptions approved calculations method right of appeal is specified the authority having jurisdiction authority having jurisdiction is usually your uh, map approval authority Compliance documentation will be comprises of many things like it should be comprised of drawing specifications and then equipment, their data, system sufficiency, detail to permit authority having jurisdiction to verify the building compliance uh, as per the code. So all these parameters have to be trialed under the, under the uh, all these components have to be trialed for, for the various parameters. So supplement in information, the authority having jurisdiction can ask for any codal provisions such as calculation sheets, worksheets, compliance forms, manufacturing literatures, and other data sheets. So some of these examples we would like to see at the end of this uh, simulation exercise so that we can have a touch and feel that what exactly we have to put in and what exactly we have to sign on the piece of paper and what exactly we have to submit to the authority. So that uh, examples, uh, realistic examples I would like to uh, present before you at the end of simulation. Now, 
if we talk about illuminance, illuminance is the light falling on the surface of the earth that is called usually surface of earth, it's called illuminance. Uh, unit of illuminance is uh, lux. Uh, recommended values of uh, lux found can be uh, found in the National Building Code uh, or uh, IES in a uh, lighting handbook. So uh, basically, we have to follow the National Building Code. So I have shared one PG uh, file, page number something something from something something around. I think 20 pages are there into that, which is on the screen also that, and it it must be have uh, shared to you uh, from the EMC. Uh, that shows that whatever the uh, uh, area of activity, the respective lux level should be acquired, and you should compromise on the lux level uh, for the area of activity. And based on that, uh, after achieving that lux level, one need to have a <coughs> energy efficiency over and above that. So, without compromising the National Building Code requirement of lux level, one need to. Uh, achieve the energy efficiency. That is the part of ECBC. So there are two level. One is the National Building Code. So another one is called the uh, ECBC Code. Okay. So if you just consider the how much lux we get uh, in an overcast day, uh, you just find out that in open air, in open ground, uh, below the below the sky, there is almost something like uh, a lack of lux level is achieved. Uh, that can be hit. Okay. And under a tree, it could be something like 10,000 lux. Under an umbrella, it could be open uh, air umbrella. It would be uh, something like 5,000 lux. Uh, in just near to the window inside a building, it could be 2,500 lux. And uh, under a dark room, uh, which has got no uh, sufficient light, it could be as low as 100 lux. Where you can just see that something is moving, but what is moving and uh, whether the gentleman or lady, you cannot find it out. It's something like uh, uh, 20 lux kind of a thing. So this is the illuminance level which one can understand. We are just moving ahead because this is not to be understood in total because everybody is known to uh, all these terminologies as well. So uh, as per the code and provision, the daylight factor that is called DF that has to be found out at the uh, level of uh, 0.8 meter above the floor level that is called work plane level. And then um, uh, on the overcast sky, outside luminance, uh, which is an unshaded one, uh, that should be placed in the denominator and the numerator. The inside luminance has to be placed, and then whatever the percentage form that can be asked, that is called daylight factor. So daylight factor has to be one of the components which needs to be addressed uh, into the simulation software. Now the daylight factor uh, has got one more uh, aspect that is the, we have got a ample amount of lux level uh, ranging from 100 lux to something like one lakh lux. But out of that, only uh, uh, ranging from <coughs> 100 lux to 2000 lux is only useful for us. If it is less than 100 lux, then it is not of much use. If it is more than 2000 lux, then it forms glare. And glare forms irritation to you, and it is not uh, supported by eyes. So the useful daylight illuminance that is called UD in short, ranges between 100 lux and 2000 lux. And how to check a lux level uh, at the uh, sitting at your place where you are just exactly sitting? You just uh, download any of the Lux meter in your uh, applications, Google application store or IS store. And if your uh, camera is good enough, uh, then you will find out that whatever the Lux level at, at present, where you are just uh, listening this uh, show, uh, you can find it out. It's ranging from around 100 to 125 Lux kind of a thing, averagely. I'm not claiming for any particular location, but ideally it should be 250 Lux to uh, 300 Lux kind of thing. So with the help of a Lux meter, you can find out Lux level at your uh, kitchen top, uh, kitchen countertop, whether your mother or wife is working and uh, whether the adequate light is there or not. So as per the codal provision, what light level is needed for the kitchen or at the desk of yourself or at the library uh, where your uh, children are studying. So uh, all lux level as per the NBC norms you can be checked very easily, though it's not very much uh, authenticated, but uh, to, to a certain extent they are uh, providing enough information regarding uh, the lux level at various uh, surfaces. So uh, these surfaces, I will just explain in detail as well. And uh, from a window or a fenestration, how much light is penetrated inside a building, inside a room, that is called a, a daylight penetration. So approximately it is 1.5 to 2 times, like if it is the height of window is Y, then up to this 1.5 to 2 times, you can have a natural light from the uh, outside window. If it is an inside window, then of course light would be lesser. So it is just a uh, thumb rule practice that it can go for 2.5. Otherwise, there are certain calculation procedures, there are certain 
certain uh, software simulation based over which you can just uh, work it out that what is the chajja level, what is the uh, glass intensity, everything, and you can just work it out the how much lux level you are getting inside that. So that uh, that's why we are assembled today to understand that what simulation procedure uh, as well as manual procedure. So daylighting is simulation method and manual calculations both are admissible under the under the ECBC. And then you will have to find out that uh, daylight requirement, which is a must, which is a mandatory for ECBC for business and educational uh, buildings, around 40% should be uh, daylight area. Okay, so that you have to calculate it, calculate it with the help of certain procedure, or you have to do go for the uh, software simulation. Both uh, uh, patterns are admissible. Apart from that, uh, in no star hotel, it should be 30% area. In case of resort, it should be 45% area, 45% of the floor area, of course. Shopping complex, 10%, and assembly halls are exempted for that. At the 90% time, this uh, daylight should be there. So that that should be the uh, exercise to work with. We have seen that for the simulation method, we have to key in certain data that requirement of lux level is ranging from 100 to 2000. Okay, and then 0.8 meter height is uh, required for working plane to calculate with. It should not be calculated here. It should not be calculated here. It be here. It should be calculated at the 0.8 meter in the center of the hall. Apart from that, the what timing uh, we have to match because sun uh, rises from the east in the morning and sets in the evening. So, uh, what timing that has to be calculated for for a simulation method? So, periodically it should be from ranging from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and for schools uh, it can be from 7 uh, a.m. to 3 p.m. So, that time uh, zone we have to provide to the simulation software. Apart from that, the daylight simulation method wise, the, the computer generated output you will find it like this, that this much amount of daylight zone it is there. Uh, and then uh, excluding the areas of services like the staircase or lift lobbies and uh, uh, toilets and everything that should be excluded, except that area, the 90% area should, uh, this 40% area should be lit at the 90% time of the daytime. So this has to be worked out. So uh, any adjoining structure, if it is, uh, uh, D is uh, equal to 2H or less than 2H, then this cognizance of this adjoining structure should also be taken into account. So adjoining structure could be a building or a tree or something like that. The reflectance of the usual uh, painting is considered as uh, furniture 0.5. Uh, half of the light is reflected by, by the furniture. Floor reflects almost 20% uh, light. Uh, wall reflects almost 50% light or ceiling reflects almost 70% light. So that reflectance value you would have to provide to the simulation uh, software. Uh, in this case, uh, the daylighting, if you would like to understand that the daylight extent factor, technically how much it is there. We have just understood that from 1.5 to 2.5 times it is the light gets penetrated from the uh, fenestration area. Uh, of what? The window height from floor to uh, uh, lintel level. So daylight extent factor is a multiplication factor over which you can understand that in what uh, orientation of uh, window, how much light is penetrated inside the room. So uh, there is a chart for that. Uh, if the glass uh, has got a 30% visibility, less than 30% visibility in the, in, the, in the window, then this table should be uh, referred. If uh, the visual light transmittance or the light is permissible through uh, that type of glass which permits more than 30% of light, then this should be uh, followed. Now, uh, the projection factor. Projection factor means the horizontal projection uh, divided by the vertical height of the window. Uh, that is called projection factor, H by V. So if it is less than 0.4 uh, of Shajja, then uh, this table has to be followed. If it is more than 0.4, then this table has to be followed. So again, bifurcation, based on the glass type this this table has to be chosen and based on the projection factor like chajja size uh, this uh, has to be uh, chosen like either this or that so we have to be specifically narrow down our search to a particular location now again in case of it is projection factor is less than uh, 0.4 like uh, the the projection is uh, less than 40 percent of the height of the window in that case again two bifurcations are there if the building is uh, geographically located uh, at the 15 degree lesser than no north, then uh, less than 15 degree north, then this has to be chosen. So for Kerala state, uh, this table has to be chosen. Okay, if the VLT is less than 0.3, then this has to be chosen. Or if it is more than 15 degree north, like uh, in case of uh, Kerala and above, you can call it uh, till the entire uh, Kashmir, then this table has to be followed. Okay. 
Now, secondly, uh, for north side window, 2.5, 2.4 times light is penetrated through the uh, window up to the up to the floor level, uh, right from uh, from window to the inside of room up to the uh, depth of say 2.4 meter uh, depth. This uh, light goes goes penetration. Okay. And uh, in case of south side, it is two times. In case of east, it is uh, 1.3 times. In case of west, it is 0.6. It, it is less than 30% uh, uh, glass is such that, that less than 30% uh, light is passed through that glass. Or otherwise, if it is more than 30%, then uh, these should be the uh, matter of concern. Okay. So by virtue of this, this manual method, you can just work it out the how much light is get penetrated through the through the window in each direction. So. Uh, daylight extent factor, it says that suppose this is a window, this is a wall, this is a wall, then uh, the, this extent factor 2H, H is like this. So 2H is, 2 is taken from this tip, whether it's 2.4, 2, 1.3 or 6, it depends on that. So it is not exactly 2, it's, it depends. And depends that orientation of uh, this window is towards north or it is towards west or it is towards east or it towards the south. So based on that thing, you have to just choose. If it is a west facing window, if it is a east facing window, it is a south facing window, it is a north facing window. So this uh, this factor 2, 2.4, uh, 1.3 is placed over here. So this depth up to what penetration level on the floor, this light will be penetrated through this window can be uh, ascertained from this table. So based on this uh, glass type, the, the availability of light through this glass, you have to choose this table and uh, for Kerala, you have to choose this. If it is a, there is no projection. So uh, this is this will be taken. If it is projection is very high, more than uh, 0.4, then uh, you, you have to cho choose uh, between these values. So and uh, from edge of uh, jamb of this window, of jambers window up to one meter, uh, this side, one meter, that side that has to be uh, prepared. So on your AutoCAD plan for each window, you will prepare this uh, daylight uh, illuminance plan. And based on this aluminum plans for each window, for each outside opening, a glazed one, uh, you will calculate the area of this lit zone with respect to the entire carpet area of the working uh, areas, not, not the serviceable areas, like excluding those areas. So if it is about coming out to be 39%, then you'll have to increase the size of window or something like that. If it is more than 40% uh, uh, that's as per that slide, uh, sorry. 40% area, 30% area, 45% area. So depending on the type of building, you have to just uh, calculate manually and then you have to draw, make a drawing on AutoCAD uh, mentioning that uh, this yellow zone for daylight zone and resp uh, respective area and that calculation, that calculation sheet either in the Excel or other format, you will have to submit to the authority. So this is one of the manual methods. Apart from that, if you got any skylight of this pattern, this pattern or this pattern, so suppose this is edge height of the room, then the daylight light will be uh, available through this skylight just uh, up to the uh, uh, just footprint of this uh, skylight area level like this. And in addition to that, uh, uh, an extent to the extent of H uh, width, H is the height of the room. So up to this level, the light zone will be there and you will have to calculate the, this width, multiply by the length of the uh, skylight. Uh, it will give you the daylight zone. So daylight zone from a window, daylight zone from the skylight has to be calculated manually, and then that has to be uh, put it uh, across to the Excel table. And with respect to the total carpet area, it should be not less than 40%, 30% as per the threshold limit of 45% that has been mentioned over there. If it is a, uh, a sawtooth kind of a, uh, skylight, then it will be 2H instead of 2H, instead of H. Okay, it is suppose it is a monitor based kind of a skylight, then it will be 1.5 H, 1.5 H, and this is the daylight area. So, uh, how much width it should be there? It depends on the type of a skylight. So, it is there, and the light should be uh, across that has to be um, uh, taken. So, that drawing has to be made, and that drawing has to be presented. Now, what is photometry? Photometry is the science of measurement of light. Okay. Uh, so, uh, how much uh, light uh, which is falling on the surface of any any material that can be calculated in terms of illuminance? Illuminance is formed in uh, 
uh, lumens per square meter and uh, illuminance intensity is uh, measured in case of candela or illuminance SI unit is uh, candela per meter square. And this lumens per meter square, how many lumens are falling uh, on this surface divided by a square meter area, unit area is called lux level. And then uh, lux has to be checked out with the help of NBC code uh, that how much lux level is required for what area and then accordingly light is available or not. So uh, luminous flux is uh, measured in terms of lumens and then its intensity is observed in terms of lux which is lumen per meter square. It is evident and it is very clear to everybody. And uh, what is what is uh, lumen? So what foot, one foot candle, uh, one foot by one foot candle uh, illuminance, one uh, lumen per square foot is called 10.76 lux. So this is this is the basic conversion from uh, lumens to lux levels. So uh, uh, as per the example, just we can take that uh, for corridor and walkways, it is 50 lux is enough to just identify a person who is going or not going. Change room, storage is here, loading base, staircase, 80 lux is required. Staff canteens, entrance halls, 160 lux is required. Continuously occupied areas, easy visual task of reading, 240 lux is required. Routine office tasks, reading, writing, typing, inquiry desk, uh, 320 lux is required. Drawing boards, town planning and uh, inquiry counter dedicated for viewing the paper plans in detail, 600 lux is required. So this is the NBC requirement. So we shall just jump to uh, another uh, sharing of uh, uh, slide. Uh, if it is easy for us to do it, then we'll do it. Just a moment. It is open, then we'll check it out. Okay, just give me a second. Hopefully, you are able to see the uh, table number four, uh, recommended values of illuminance. Uh, this is the outcome of uh, uh, National Building Code 2016, uh, Volume 2, Chapter 8, which comprises of this table. This shows that uh, uh, hopefully you are able to see it. Uh, all type of interior activity, agriculture or horticulture. So this is comprised of every uh, building type, every building type, farm workshop, general workshop, uh, coal mine surfaces workshop, you know, like their plants and everything, not not for the mining or something. OK, lamp rooms, repair sections, where well, you've got a habitat uh, uh, roof over you uh, for, for sake of any working. So this is there. So. <coughs> Let's see, we'll just uh, scroll down because there are 12 pages over here. If you are able to see manual, metal manufacturer unit, if you are having any kind of uh, building for that, then it is available for that as well. But we'll jump down to another for ceramic making uh, units. It is for industrial. First portion is for industrial buildings. For chemical buildings, for buildings. It is not for the chemical plant. It's for building. Okay. So I'm just uh, moving ahead, mechanical engineering, and then I'm just uh, marching ahead with the next page. Uh, Electric, electronically engineering, like it's a it's a factory kind of that kind. Food and drink and tobacco industry, but we are not interested in, in the industry as of now. Frozen foods and all that textile, and then leather industry. I'm just passing there. You got a copy of this uh, table number four with you, shared from the EMC. Uh, cloth and footwear. Just I'm skipping that. I'm just speaking timber and furniture. I'm speaking here. Just uh, I'm just going through that. You should understand that. These uh, sort of data is available with us and we can uh, just refer to it. Now, distribution and storage like it could be Amazon the store kind of a thing or uh, that thing, the cold storage and commercial. No, here comes uh, our, our requirement. Offices, general offices. It should be 300, 500 and 750 lux. Uh, at present, why these three values are there? That is also uh, I will mention you. But uh, for the sake of understanding, we have to just take this uh, middle value which is the average value and mostly you have to consider uh, this average value for the requirement of most of the building, not these extreme cases where low and high is there. 
so for general offices uh, in which you are working or the the office which you are going to design uh, will be having a 500 lux uh, capacity deep plan general offices the planning is uh, very uh, deep in there like town planning and something like it could be 750 lux computer work station 500 lux drawing offices 500 lux drawing board 750 lux uh, or uh, like banks and uh, uh, building bodies counter offices it should be 500 lux okay services like uh, uh, i will just go up again the useful information for us For retailing, small shops, it should be 500 lux. Like uh, for uh, general checkout, it should be 500 lux. Uh, places of public assembly for worshipping. If you are uh, designing any worship place, then it should be uh, public rooms, it should be 300 lux. Uh, conference hall and fire, it should be 200 lux. Dressing room, it should be uh, 300 lux. Projection room, it should be 150 lux. Churches, body of church, 150 lux. Pulpit, uh, uh, Choir stalls, uh, 300 lux. Hospitals. Uh, are you able to see it? Huh? Uh, <coughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So these lux level that we have to ascertain from our software uh, at every room individually. Like for consulting area, it should be 300 lux. But for examination, it could be open. So consultation room. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, examination, there should be 1000 lux. So if you are not, if you design the building or if you supervise the building and suppose the building has got uh, uh, inferior lux level because of the not improper design of light or something like that. Somebody may sue, somebody may make a claim that I, my body was not examined properly by the doctor because the lux level designed by the engineers or technocrats were not adequate. So uh, because of uh, uh, inadequate uh, light, the uh, examination or whatever the outcome of any, any kind of uh, uh, diagnosis that was not proper and uh, I, I suffered this loss, so this should be recovered from, from the uh, concerned person. So th these kind of exercise could be there uh, in the due course of time when when the uh, when uh, uh, the children have got the specs, then uh, somebody may go along with the lux meter and can say that your library or your classroom or something like that does not have adequate light as per the NBC norms. So whatever the NBC norms says, even for public building or private building, we should be uh, able to justify our design with the help of certain tools until and now there was no tool as such to uh, to to uh, gather this information uh, or just to ensure this information to to our sites so uh, this is for the hospitals and now we'll just uh, jump to next level you can refer to this uh, at any point of time uh, like uh, it is for uh, ward circulations for night time it should be three to five lux only so that the people uh, patient can have a, a better sleep for uh, uh, night for adults uh, it should be hardly 0.1 to 1 lux so if you are not providing uh, this much amount of darkness inside the room uh, where the patients at night they can uh, have a sound sleep and uh, the patient has got certain uh, uh, phobia or certain discomfort then the claim can be uh, go to the to the designer level so x-rays areas orthopedic surgeries i'm not concentrating only on the uh, uh, hospital parts but libraries 300 lux, bookshelves, it should be 150 lux, reading rooms, 300 lux, and you must be aware of that because it's nothing new is there. So uh, education-wise, assembly hall, 300 lux, and ranging from 500 lux, laboratory, seminar halls, everything is mentioned over here. For transport, airport, it should be 500 lux at the counter of uh, ticket counter. Suppose it is a, it has got a 200 lux, then somebody ca can say that I filled my uh, the, the the form in the wrong way so that my visa could be rejected or my flight get delayed uh, and uh, at the age of 70 I cannot expect that such a uh, mishap uh, in my life uh, that uh, not adequate light at the counter was uh, designed and then because of in the absence of this 500 lux or hardly 150 lux was there uh, and I couldn't do justice with my, uh, my my task something like that departure lounges 200 lux or uh, ticket office 500 lux kind of a thing like parcel office has got 100 lux, 200 lux. So it's, a, it's a just a information uh, which need to be compliant while designing the respective kind of building. 
So general building areas, entrance should have got a 200 lux. Circulation area should have got a lift should have got at least 100 lux or something like that. Medical storeroom and some, all these things. So I'm not going into detail of uh, everything, but what lux level that can be referred uh, to the this NBC norms that has been there. Now I'll just back jump back to my original slide. Pardon me for switching between the two slides. Yeah. So these lux level are tentative one. The exact one uh, which I just shared with you on the NBC norms. Now. Light source could be a natural, it could be artificial. In case of a natural, it, it is a daylight. In case of artificial, it could be ranging from incandescent bulb to all the LEDs, all, all formats are there. So the efficacy, color, lamp life, everything has to be considered while choosing any lamp. And then color rendering index, like uh, having a different type of tone of light, uh, ranging from that is called color temperature. It starts from around say, 2000 uh, uh, Kelvin to something like uh, 8000 Kelvin. That is the range. So uh, color rendering index is also one of the aspects that we need to understand that uh, how much uh, beauty vision or color rendering potential of that particular light is there. So in case of uh, uh, the Mina Bajar where the all the bangles and everything is shown or in case of jewelry, the color rendering index 100 is required. So you will find out that uh, almost incandescent lamp are being utilized for that uh, Mina Bajar. Apart from that, uh, in case of uh, LEDs, the CRI is not uh, more than 80 85 percent so again you have to choose because many times you will find out your uh, mother that uh, they purchase the any kind of uh, cloth they take it to the outside uh, of the shop and see that what kind of color because uh, open in open air that is a color rendering index is almost 100 times 100 percent and in the shop it uh, it hardly 60 percent to 70 percent so whatever you bring from shop doesn't fit at the party doesn't fit at the uh, outside of the shop so that CRI matters a lot and depending on the uses of the light that that has to be there. So color temperature wise ranging from 2000 uh, 200 lux uh, 2200 uh, Kelvin to 7000 7500 leveling this kind of temperature with the same amount of wattage you can just see and based on these things these uh, these areas where you can just uh, uh, put across uh, your, your material too. So uh, this color temperature, we have just shown that what is the bandwidth over there and what for the uses of this for the kitchen. This level is uh, color temperature is needed for living room. This much is usually needed. Again, it's a subjective term for commercial retail and art studio. This much amount of color temperature is needed. So these kind of color temperatures which are depicted over here. So for warm white, cool white, warm white this is a mood lighting. You can call it and you can just have a, a glimpse of that with the, with the same area. So. Uh, uh, these days you've got a different type of lights which changes color uh, with the help of a, an app uh, in your installed in your mobile and you can have a variety of 16 billion colors uh, range uh, within within the specified limit. So if it is a uh, not proper lighting or poor lighting, then the improper vision, glare, discomfort, strain, stress and reduction in productivity is being observed. So we have to be very careful while designing natural as well as the artificial lighting. So ECBC requirement for lighting, so it could be for in interior space lighting of building or exterior lighting of building, okay, or exterior build and ground lighting of the buildings. Okay, for landscape that is to be also be well taken care of within the campus. So compliance requirement for this thing, it has got again mandatory requirement as well as the prescriptive requirement and, and the simulation requirement. So we have just seen uh, all these provisions in, in, in just talking to you. And apart from that, the mandatory requirement will be for lighting control like it should be automatically shut off space controlled and all that things that we'll discuss in the next round automatic lighting shut, shut off if it is a more than 300 square meter area uh, of any 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 uh, hall or something like that 90 percent interior lighting has to be automized so automization means like it could be controlled from a time timer based that at, at 8 uh, pm the all lights will be finished at, except the 10 percent lights and occupancy sensor can also be placed if the no occupancy is there the the lights will be automatically shut off. In addition to that, the space control method for a single uh, big hall, there should be a uh, 250 square meter area and uh, ranging between 250 square meter area and 1000 square meter area. There should be a control uh, of lighting from a single place. So these kind of overriding of manual as well as automatic uh, control is required. All these are mandatory ones. So we need to check it that whether physically they are not. 
but they are not concerned with the lighting lux 11 and everything so we'll just uh, marching ahead it is not uh, our today's talk talk to understand uh, one more uh, good thing is that that is called uh, daylight control so suppose there is a window there is a uh, these are the series of tables to work a near window suppose 300 to 300 to 500 lux is needed so lamp brightness reduced down to 80% and remains only 20%. So that only 20% is sufficient enough to provide that 300 to 500 lux because some part around 150 lux is coming from the window and rest is supplied from this lamp. That is, with, with the help of daylight sensor, this light can be dimmed and that the energy efficiency can be observed. Now, secondly, here, if it is supposed to be a table in the middle of the room, then in that case, you will find out that the lamp brightness should be um, around 30% automatically. And it could be if it is very far from window, then just to have this very same amount of lux level here or here calculated as per the requirement, uh, it could be 40% uh, burning of this uh, lamp or lit of lamp so that uh, you, you are certain this 300 to 500 lux on the tabletop. So based on the distance from the window, these sensors operate and that is called the saving of power. So close to window, it is a lesser power. Uh, far from window, it could be a deeper power, higher power. Uh, one could be having a, a photo sensor or astronomical time switch. So as per the astronomical uh, zone that uh, uh, suppose in the summers, the light remains up to 7 p.m. or in case of uh, winters, it remains up to 5.30 p.m. Then uh, astronomical uh, time switches can be placed uh, to control the light. Even uh, the concentration of codes uh, restrict to a very small entity that is called uh, mm, exit sign in a building. So if it has got one face sometimes it has got two faces also so one five watt per face more than that cannot be uh, that bulb cannot be put you cannot put a 40 watt bulb inside that and you say that my exit line is lit and it is visible from very far something like that so uh, only five watt per face has been addressed over there so uh, energy conservation is a primary object so that that is there now, perspective criteria, interior lighting power, building area method, space function method that we'll see over here. Uh, we don't want to go into very much detail over here because we would like to see that what kind of component that to be incorporated into the soft simulation software. So building area method wise, like type of building is, it could be office building, hospital, hotels, shopping malls, university and schools, library, dining, bar, lounge. These kind of building typology could be there. And there's lighting power density for the entire building. The total amount of wattage consumed for light in the entire building of office or hospital divided by the total built up area of the building. So that comes out to be 9.5. That is the upper limit. So uh, per square meter, not more than uh, 9.5 watt can be uh, uh, consumed inside that building. So this is for this building type. These are again building types and their restrictions are there for performing art theaters, it could be as high as 16.3 wattage, almost uh, 1.7 times of this thing. Or otherwise, it could be parking garage, could be hardly 3 watt per meter square. So you cannot have more lighting and power, uh, parking. So something like that, this is a building area method. Or otherwise, individual room-wise method is also, that is called the space function method is also uh, prevailing. So for common areas, restroom means toilet, you cannot have a 7.7 .7 watt per meter square more than light in that place. In case of a storage room, like uh, it should be uh, restricted to 6.8 watt per meter square. In case of electrical mechanical room, it's 7.1. In case of an emergency room of healthcare, it is as high as 22.8 watt per meter square. In case of operation uh, theater, it is 21.8. In case of laundry washing, 7.5. In case of a parking driveway, 3.1. In case of a stairway, it should be uh, restricted to 5.1. And everything has to be calculated uh, with the help of software only, otherwise, there is a manual uh, headache method is there. It consumes time, it consumes uh, weeks to generate uh, the, the, the report. Because uh, up till now, uh, before the software simulation, the manual methods were prevailing. So manual uh, methods are there, but they are not uh, very, very correct because interpolation of two uh, adjacent light cannot be ascertained very well in case of a manual method, but that can be very easily done uh, in a, in, in a uh, in a blink of his, uh, uh, eyes, uh, that uh, almost almost you get uh, result in uh, two minutes, three minutes kind of thing for the entire building. So again, it's a hotel dining and every room uh, that has been mentioned in the code. And even if you are going to have a requirement as per the as per the uh, ECBC norms, that has to be fed into the software and checked. How to check that? That will that will see with the help of software. 
so suppose there is a, a small building of retail and office upper three floors and suppose we have to just find it out that how much permissible limit of light is there for office the lpds are different permissible lpds are different and for retail the permissible uh, they are different so total number of area how much that is there and louting uh, power allowed density is something like if it is maximum allowed is 10 and the area is 720 for the office enclosed enclosed means cabin open means uh, half cubicle meeting rooms means conferences lobbies means <clears throat> lobbies means uh, i think somebody is taking care to uh, let the people in the, uh, enter into the uh, meeting room uh, so if we multiply this thing then this is the permissible uh, limit for that if i need to uh, let them in then kindly uh, prompt me for that if it is i am the only host who uh, who can control give the control thank you thank you very much ma'am so uh, uh, if this is a retail one, then uh, area corresponding area to the maximum allowed limit, both are multiplied. Then the, this is the maximum power uh, that can be consumed inside a building for office. That is 25 uh, kilowatt and then the 14 kilowatt for the retail for single story. So maximum 40 kilowatt can be consumed or 40,000 uh, watts can be consumed in lighting for that particular building as per the law. So it should be lesser than that. So whatever the light that we are providing, We'll have to count that how many three watt lamps, how many 10 watt lamps, how many 15 watt lamps are there, and then total summation of them that should not exceed for all four floors to, to this extent. So this is maximum permissible limit. Uh, now uh, for exterior lighting, suppose building has got a canopy. Canopy means porch. So um, 10 watt per meter square of the canopy area. Suppose the canopy has got 30 feet by 50 feet kind of a um, uh, total uh, size of the porch, then the light inside the porch cannot be uh, 30 by 50 means 1500, that means 150 square meter, 150 square meter multiply by 10. So 1500 watts are maximum allowable in case of any, any building entrance. Without canopy, 90 watt per linear meter of the door width. Suppose door width is something like 5 meter, uh, then 5 meter multiply by 90, that is 5, 9, uh, 5 into 9, that is 450. 450 watt maximum light power near the building entrance can be provided, not more than that. Building exit is also uh, restricted with only 60 watt per me uh, line, uh, linear meter of the door width. Building facade, the 5 watt per square meter of vertical facade area. So suppose you got a, I'm not talking about the uh, monumental buildings, They're, those are in the exempted category. So apart from that, if you got a any any building uh, which usually lit for the not for the occasion it's not for the 15th others or something like that we are considering for that usually it is a fixed light and it is being operated uh, on a daily basis kind of a thing so that is restricted to five watt per square meter suppose the building has got 80 meter length and suppose it is a 20 meter height 80 means 80 multiplied by uh, 20 that is 1600 1600 multiplied by five so that much amount of focusing light on the uh, facade of the building can be placed uh, not more than that like emergency assigns ATM kiosk were only 1.0 uh, watt per square meter. Okay, pedestrian walkways uh, 2.0. So it is the in, in campus, if got a pedestrian walkway, then the walkway should not be uh, lit more than that. In case of stairways or in case of landscaping, what we call it the, the uh, outside landscape of within the campus of a building. So 0.5 watt per square meter. So whatever the bollard we put it inside the decoration or any kind of lighting we uh, do, not for the occasion lighting, like it is a party is going on and somebody says that uh, we lit for only parties. But if the parties are perpetual, then this is the this is the limit. Uh, outdoor sales area, uh, if it is there uh, in open, then it should be like uh, it's a, a coffee hut or tea hut kind of a thing, then it should be restricted to 9 watt per square meter. So this is the limitation as per the table 6.7 of the ECBC code. Uh, and for ECBC plus, there is much more restriction. And for super ECBC, much more stringent norms are there. Uh, now, NBC uh, Volume 2, Section 8 says about uh, various other factors, if you, if you would like to know about something like, so this says that the floor area and the square meter, like 0 to 230 square meter area, number of 40 watt fluorescent tubes that has been provided. Fluorescent tubes are obsolete, but equivalent value you can just choose for. And the ceiling percent reflectance has been given for the wall, ceilings and floor. So you can refer to these values if you want to have any uh, value which is not known to you. So this is a referral uh, chart for that. And based on that thing, you if you go for that, another chart, 
then the separation of height ratio is also there with respect to fenestration percentage of the floor area. So again, this chart is there. So if something for a working plane, you would like to have a, these separation values uh, and the lux level for that, then you can go for these, these values. So these are the uh, various charts which supports your uh, design input if you, if you are not having any kind of if able to assume or something data is missing with you. So the, you can refer to this thing. So these uh, values are uh, admissible by the uh, authority under the ECBC because it belongs to NBC uh, 2016 volume to section 8 and the page number is also mentioned over here. So this, these clauses for incandescent lamp, you can understand the wattage range is ranging from 15 to 200. Efficacy of the lumen uh, per watt uh, is ranging to two, 12 to 20. So uh, the ECBC code says that every lamp should have got a minimum efficacy of uh, uh, 70 lumens per watt. Okay, as of now. So uh, now your range will start not for this thing, but LED will uh, fall into that category. Metal halide lamps, uh, MH lamps, uh, low pressure sodium uh, lamps, only these will be uh, admissible. Otherwise, even the old fashion of CFL and uh, slim line fluorescent lamp, these are not permissible. So th from this table, you can work it out that if my lamp is not admissible as per the law, we cannot provide that uh, light and uh, another better light we have to uh, provide with. And their respective average life, so they even ascertain also okay, something which is good for in terms of luminification is has got higher range of uh, average life also. And maintenance and color radiation, uh, rendering index is also provided over here. So you can refer to this these kind of charts which are provided in the section eight of NBC. So uh, I tried to mention you that uh, there are three ranges of lux level which was uh, depicted in the table four. So uh, where the higher value have to taken, that has been given, the errors are costly to rectify, visual work is critical, accuracy for higher productivity. Since exem exemplary cases or in case of ex uh, extraordinary cases, these uh, lower value and high value should be taken. In case of lower value, reflectance or contrast are usually unusually high, speed and accuracy is not important and task is executed on the office value. So there, is, there, are, there are three uh, uh, levels of uh, Lux value was given in the table four, which you have seen. The lower one it is for these ranges. For higher one, this is there. But you have to refer the central one, and that has to be fed into the software. Hope I could uh, clear this thing. The three values which were depicted in uh, the table number four. Now approved simulation tools. Uh, one is called Radiance. Another is called Desim. These are these can be downloaded on the trial version or on a paid version or in a free version, and uh, you can just uh, work out with whatever the comfortable uh, situation to to acquire these kind of softwares. Uh, some of the on the perpetual license, some some are basically on the uh, yearly maintenance license. Uh, Groundhog, uh, Diva, Diva, uh, Open Studio, and then. Uh, uh, Likaso. Now, Open Studio uh, is a freeware, okay, uh, and it works on the SketchUp. And the SketchUp initial version is free version, not the professional version. So, on initial version, it works fine, but Open Studio is a very very big software, and uh, it requires uh, immense amount of time to understand and understand to model uh, any any building in initial. Suppose it might require say something like minimum four months to have a uh, gathering of uh, information, uh, say working at least two to three hours a day kind of a thing. So uh, if you're not consistent for that, uh, it could be eight months or something like that. So uh, Radiance is a good software to work with, but it doesn't work with, uh, with, with so many aspects. So you have to choose from which, which, which one is the particular need of the particular uh, uh, site or particular project or the integrity with the all other factors put, putting together to, to get the proper value of your lighting level inside and outside. It depends on that. So you can keep on practicing. Open Studio is a workable time, but it requires a hell of the things because the procedure is uh, very long to understand. So uh, that is there. And Likaso is also there. Apart from that, uh, uh, Sephira is also there. Uh, Lightenza is also there, but all these are uh, having a, a trial version kind of a thing and the, the time elapses so fast that uh, once you download it, uh, within 30 days you are not able to do it. Uh, in case of Design Builder, uh, the costing is something like 2 lakhs of rupees. Uh, um, and that is also sometimes a perpetual license not available, so you have to go for that. 
spot is also there revit is also there in case of revit uh, if you have got a only perpetual license this will not work because uh, there is a uh, <coughs> section of uh, uh, energy optimization and that works only when you have got a uh, their their uh, yearly subscription with them so that works only at that level ies also a paid software so uh, if you consider that the comparison of daylighting analysis tool then the ecotech if you uh, uh, that was an autodesk uh, uh, suit uh, component and it was phased out in 2012 itself so uh, for the last 9 years there was no updation of this software but it still is working and look people are finding it comfortable but again it's a paid software uh, but you cannot pay it because earlier version was paid and for the last 9 years they haven't rolled out with that so any previous one version if you got then you can do it for that then design builder it's a paid one it's a very good one uh, diva for rhino is also paid uh, honey bee for rhino honey bee is free but rhino is not free okay so uh, rhino you have to purchase and honey bee is a plug in is free for that uh, light stanza is basically paid subscription based and uh, ies is also uh, a subscription based so it's a Uh, for initial learning stage one should not invest into paid so i just uh, created or my make up my mind to demonstrate you a very easy and comfortable software though that is not a uh, admissible tool but you can have a touch and feel and versatility of job into that so uh, uh, rhino grass offer is also applicable but rhino is not uh, free uh, i think it is available for 90 days 90 days is a, a good enough time to understand any software we can download it that otherwise it cost in something for uh, a normal version is something for uh, $1000 uh, so it uh, costing something 7 lakhs rupees and uh, the the educational version is also costing something like $100 to 7 7500 uh, rupees but again the the uh, educational ver- versions have got certain restrictions in that so uh, you can you can go for that so these kind of uh, effects and everything that you are seeing over here can be worked out with now climate analysis tools are also available the freeware is the climate consultant you can consult it or edrumash or lady bit tool so these are basically freewares uh, rhino 3d is paid software but uh, lady bit is basically free okay so these are the climate analysis tool by virtue of that you can just ascertain how much uh, solar radiations are falling uh, in your area but otherwise if you provide information in your uh, other software with the with the latitude longitude it generally takes the uh, weather data file So you need not to worry for this climate analysis, but otherwise that is needed. Now um, this was up to this level. I, I would like to just uh, go ahead with the change of slides. So uh, just a moment. Pardon me for changing of slide. So the software which I have chosen you for understanding only, because it's freeware, it's uh, very dynamic, but because of its uh, searching ability, some some factors are not matching to the ECBC norms, so it is not being uh, as of now included to the approved list of software. But it's a versatile one, and uh, just hello, Haji, hello. ठीक है हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है सॉरी देर वॉज इंपॉर्टेंट कॉल आई एम सॉरी फॉर दैट सो डायलक्स इज लाइटिंग सिमुलेशन सॉफ्टवेयर इट्स इजीली इट्स अ टोटली फ्री अवेलेबल देर आर लॉट्स ऑफ ड्राॅइंग्स विच आर अवेलेबल एग्जिस्टिंग केसेज आर अवेलेबल एंड यू कैन सी दैट देर इज स्ट्रीट लाइटिंग इज ऑल्सो पॉसिबल Uh, adjoining as adjacent to the building the lighting which has been there that can be calculated designed as well as calculated okay and then uh, uh, if you got a showroom then uh, what is whatever that is light that is coming out from the showroom that can also be calculated the pathway lighting can be calculated designed and calculated both in case of a interior focus light that can be calculated in case of a uh, you can call it uh, 
a flat inside a flat that uh, daylight evening light and both can be planned very well and uh, suppose uh, you got assignment to uh, deliver a uh, mercedes benz or any automobile uh, showroom or ferrari showroom kind of a thing in that case suppose the requirement of client is that the irrespective of the uh, uh, location of the my showroom whether be it in koyatam or it, it is in thiruvananthapuram or at hyderabad or something in kashmir my lux level focusing on the uh, my vehicle is uh, fixed that is 3000 lux over my over my car and i have got a demonstration board that featuring my car should have got 750 lux and i have got a uh, office area where people can discuss for the uh, bank loan or something like that that should have got a 300 lux and uh, one uh, coffee lounge where people can wait for their relatives uh, should not be having more than 50 lux so that people get can can get relaxed at that place so 50 lux 300 lux 750 lux and 3000 lux are requirement for a single showroom four different type of uh, this requirements are there so how uh, one can do without uh, having any simulation uh, practice so with the help of simulation software with the help of realistic uh, uh, fixtures of lighting one can ascertain and provide information uh, perfectly with the with a with a very nice report to the uh, presenter to the to the authorities that it is as per the uh, requirement the the legal requirement is that it should not be having a, this much amount of uh, lighting de density over over and above that and the client requirement is that this much amount of fixed lux level are required for my each of showroom so that whether it is in, in france or it is in india or anywhere in uh, Mm, uh, Indonesia, um, everywhere my uh, showroom uh, looks very same with the same lux level with irrespective of outside light. So it should be dimmable light and everything should be perfect in nature. So you have got a tool now to evaluate all these things. I'll, up till now, there was a missing chance that uh, you have to give up that uh, project or something like that, but you, now you can do it. The same documentation can be utilized for the ec compliance as well. So Dilex software is used for light planning. Don't go into detail of everything which has been displayed. I will just share it, the the, the PPT. But the, what we have to focus that uh, what for Dilex software is for light planning. It is maybe used by light planners and designers worldwide. Software is uh, really helpful to design indoor and outdoor both. The color and intensity of light it can just uh, visualize and calculate the uh, daylight as well as plan your lighting scenes also. So these are the features for uh, this software and very minimal amount of only 4 GB and simple uh, machine is required for that, not much. And then you have to go to dialux.com uh, and then download over here. And then Dialux EO, uh, now new version of 9.2 is also available. So you download the Dialux EO 9.2 now, which is an older slide, which I am just uh, showing you. So it is it will download very fast from here. And then uh, the product catalog is also mentioned of say something like uh, various other, if you just see, Panasonic or Philips or um, Ragni or Osram, all these lighting catalogs are available and they are downloadable. So Philips might be having something like 7,000 different types of lights. So all light levels and all fixture details are available with the, this download. Or Osra might be having something like 12,000 uh, different type of fixtures, so that can be downloaded. Panasonic has got something like so. It has got complete manufacturer list, and then you can just download information from there. Now, Dialux Ovo has got a very simple interface to uh, interact. Uh, the graphical interface, user interface, is, has got only three components in major. So, outdoor building planning, import any drawing from uh, uh, various formats like DXF, uh, DWG, and uh, JPG and many other formats are supported. Then room planning you can do. You can go for street planning and sample indoor planning is also available. And then you can choose and you can go, go further. Now, if, while creating a new project, the outdoor and building planning you can import from DXF or any JPEG also. Uh, yeah. Rectangular room you can make. You can make a tubular street planning, tabular street planning like uh, for an entire campus of colony or any university campus or any hospital campus. You can just evaluate and make a make a complete chart of that. So uh, the variety of uh, modes like construction, light, calculation of object, export, documentation kind of uh, different modes are there. And every mode has got several tools and activities to choose from. OK, so construction has got these many uh, new parameters. Light will have some other uh, tools. And calculation object will also have another tool. 
the beauty of this software is that you start from construction then go for light then go for calculation object then further export and then documentation and manufacture so this will be the your exercise to uh, perform your task in this uh, software and once you choose the construction then first one is to bring the light and project your uh, room and then make uh, uh, apertures into that aperture means like the fenestration door windows kind of outgoing and everything related to that sequentially one by one you can just choose and you can just provide information to your model and uh, put lights and then calculations and then export your file and then this procedure is very simple so only six uh, modes are there and respective a few uh, tools are there comparatively very easy software to deal with and then you can construct and do everything so you can make a plan site facade element space room elements roof ceiling cutouts furniture and objects materials all, everything is available under this construction in case of light all types of luminaires lamps uh, you can edit the joints filters light scenes spaces uh, maintenance factors that how how much frequently you have to change the uh, um, um, lamp inside the fixtures energy consumption pattern you can set according to your needs and copy and uh, arrange the uh, any array of any light uh, very easily and views uh, you can just have a rendered views apart from uh, in comparison to equest it has got a fantastic rendering editor uh, matchless kind of a thing with a very small software you have got a very versatile uh, rendering editor and you have got a, um, a presentable image that can be shared on uh, to your client or to uh, end user uh, at any point of time uh, it's it's that that uh, easy to understand so calculation of object i told you that the 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 automobile should be focused with 3000 lux so that lux level can be ascertained on that particular uh, level of height it could be something like 2.4 meter height or 1.2 meter height the 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 display board which has got another height another vertical plane so that can be focused very well uh, the the sofas co um, coffee table sofas so that will be having 50 lux kind of a thing so calculation of object can be done so suppose you if you got a mural then you can uh, focus mural if you got a, any anything uh, other other picture object or something like that you can focus it on the vertical horizontal any inclined plane as well and you can see that uh, what am whatever amount of light you design for a particular season whether it is a rainy season or outside of rainy season uh, everything is, can be planned uh, with, with the time stepping as well views uh, ray tracer and plans can be generated and exported most of the uh, admissible uh, protocols that have been made by this software selected outputs prints projection information configure templates it is available now with the autocad plan you just import that it will ask the uh, autocad file name and if you bring it then it will the the image of that uh, autocad file can be placed you, now you have to make a polyline over that and after making a polyline, uh, setting setting the reference point, what you do for any any polyline generation in any of the softwares, you just calibrate that whether it is a 50 feet or not or 30 feet size plot is there. You can calibrate it. It will show you that it is a calibrated one. So scaling, if it is needed, you can do it. Otherwise, if it is a uh, admissible uh, size, then you can just go ahead, make a uh, outside boundary with the help of these tools, which are very easy to uh, demonstrate with. So you can make an outside uh, wall, external wall to the model. You can project it like what you do in the SketchUp. And then um, after generating the SketchUp model, you can set the story height, floor thickness, and everything. You can just provide like what we have seen in the eQuest, very similar to that. You can make inside the spaces like room one, room two, room three kind of thing. You can draw the new rooms with the help of these uh, panels, and uh, these rooms can be seen. Uh, now you can, can duplicate the story if the very same uh, drawing is there for entire 13 floors then that you can duplicate that after that uh, making this room one room two room three you can select any of the rooms and you can just provide it lighting information particular to that so we are making a light in this grid pattern one two three four five six seven eight something like that so uh, these can be generated so we have placed the light over here one two three four five six seven in the room number three so it has been made that uh, it has placed the light. The lighting intensity over a particular plane can be formed that is called uh, lighting contour 
or less level contour at the 0.8 meter height. So whatever the height, the, like if you are providing information for Graha, they say it for 0.75. For in case of other uh, requirement, suppose it is not a legal requirement, suppose it's a automobile showroom requirement at a, a height of 1.2 meter or something like that, that lux level can be created very easily with the help of light we provided. So this provides that information and in the in the form of a report also, not in the form of uh, merely the, the 3D illustration. Uh, instead of that, in, or in addition to that, the, the uh, detailed report is also uh, available to you. So these lux level are available. So you can see the majority of portions, whatever the required lux level of 200, 300 from these lights. So you can uh, change the lights. You can uh, uh, provide uh, uh, dimmable fixtures over here so that acquired number of lighting uh, lux levels are achieved. So this is a calculation pattern. Up till now, there was no calculation pattern uh, with us. The, only the manual methods were there and they were not also very perfect. So uh, display option wise, if you see the documentation, I have just told you that in case of eQuest, you have to provide this information over here. Lighting power density uh, for office, for corridor, for lobby, for conference room. So this figure that comes from this uh, documentation. So uh, the documentation will provide information to be which that uh, lighting information to be fed into the eQuest software over here. OK. So here we have to incorporate into eQuest because eQuest is not a lighting design software. Lighting design software is what we have just discussed at 10 softwares with us. But uh, the total in totality, which uh, which uh, takes care about the uh, building envelope as well as uh, comfort systems, HVAC systems, as well as lighting, as well as renewables and everything in total, not exactly renewables in eQuest, but uh, electrical options and everything in, in total. So uh, this software needs information from other software. So uh, the, the lighting simulation softwares provide information in the form of uh, various areas and various lux levels. We'll just to, uh, see in the next slide that what kind of information can be gathered with the lighting design software, which can be fed into the eQuest software. So uh, uh, the documentation part we are just talking about, we'll see the actual thing also, the lighting controls, the proposed case is this thing, a standard case is there. So, Whatever the standard case is there, you can just add on something to that and you can just provide the uh, narration for that. So uh, this this was just a uh, simple case to understand with. Now we'll just uh, jump to our next Dilux uh, uh, Evo uh, directly into uh, one of the sample uh, model. So I'll just uh, switch. Pardon me for switching between one thing to another. Yeah. So uh, this is a small house that you can see over here. So this is a project entire project is there. So project has got certain names and addresses and description, but for construction, we can see it over here. Now construction has got further more elaborations. This is site one. Site one means uh, within a campus, there could be a number of buildings, like in case of university or hospitals, uh, you, got a, you could be administrative block, you could have got a academic blocks of various uh, faculties, or it could be library building, it could be faculty wise library buildings, it could be mass, it could be uh, restaurant, it could be uh, hostels, it could be guest house, it could be the staff quarters, it could be Dean's Bangalore. So there could be a number of different buildings could be there. So uh, we are just going for that, okay, how much information we can just provide. You can just model, make a model inside this building and you could put lights and everything in, in detail. So I'm just showing you that how beautiful model can be made with the help of uh, dialects. And this is the uh, real life, uh, case example of my uh, office. Okay, so this is a upcoming Bangalore and uh, these information I just uh, put in. So building wise, if you see, this is the building number one. Story wise, you can also play like uh, story number one. So this is the ground floor. This is the entrance lobby. This is a lift and uh, these are the uh, ten, uh, block for tenant and we can go for uh, story number uh, two. So it is a first floor, first floor, it has got an open deck kind of a thing. This is a drawing room. Uh, this is the kitchen area, open kitchen area. This is temple. This is a washing area. 
this is parents bedroom this is a stair room this is a lift lobby and then uh, uh, over here th there is a reading room kind of thing and open balcony and apart from that if you go for uh, story number above that so it is again very similar kind of thing but this is uh, the the master bedroom there there are uh, walking wardrobes this is uh, the toilet and then apart from that these uh, this is the children's room this is the daughter's room this is a uh, uh, sc shing's well so this is a uh, what you can call it uh, youtubers uh, studio kind of thing and again this is a open terrace over here and then again you can just see the upper story over here so upper story is, has got a uh, this is a yoga room this is a stair room this is a lift lobby and this is a uh, steam sauna kind of thing and this is open terrace kind of thing so uh, these uh, stories are uh, available and uh, these information is available and we can put any kind of light and uh, design into that and we can create a light scene also over here and then light scene can be uh, uh, combined one or detailed one that can be seen so we are not going to detail because uh, we have uh, something else to also be seen over here so uh, this is the uh, model now room wise we can also go for that so it has giving room sequentially 1 2 3 4 for lift uh, it is giving one for toilet it is giving two for uh, uh, lobby area it is giving domination at, at uh, every every uh, number level not not mentioning you can but change it also but if it is not required you can just go ahead with that because it's a faster approach to work with now uh, story wise it has been uh, uh, described like it is a room 1 room 2 room 3 room 4 room 5 so every every room wise you can see you can place this is a window kind of ventilator and this is a light and this is also a light so you can just make and sure that what kind of lights and lux level that is available over here okay we shall generate a lux uh, platform also but what kind of spread of light that you can also virtually see by just clicking it so if you click it then this much amount of uh, area of this particular type of light is there so this is spectrum you can see visibly over here you can keep on changing the room numbers and you can just ascertain room number say 7 room number say 10 room number say 12 13 semi i think you are able to see the room number 13 thank you thank you very much sometimes the connectivity get lost and the presenter goes beyond 10 15 slides ahead and some, uh, again that has to be repeated and nobody understands what he is speaking <laughs> sometimes thank you thank you so uh, uh, hopefully people are uh, getting enjoyment with uh, uh, glimpses of uh, the software because software cannot be understood in a day or two or something like that but uh, if you got a touch and feel that you might feel uh, attraction or inclination towards the need for the calibration of your design uh, of course uh, up till now uh, the all the uh, design uh, juries and uh, they were there for to uh, evaluate your design parameters but how to evaluate our self design so and design again that's a, uh, i think that is a relative term to uh, discuss with but again some objectivity towards our comparison between our two designs can be ascertained and suppose if consumes lot of uh, auxiliary power that the building could be having a sick building syndrome so uh, there could be one indication that if the building is properly designed naturally ventilated naturally have got a thermal and visual comfort so minimum amount of auxiliary power will be needed so there could be one indices that irrespective of anything like uh, one cannot comment on anybody's design or something or uses of something but if it is consuming more auxiliary power then it can be said so that uh, building has got a little amount of sick building syndrome in it. little amount of little again that is a challenging task how much percentage so you can compare by yourself without saying to anybody that if i make this uh, window like this thing or if i pay uh, pay attention to the, this lighting pattern or this if i choose this brand of light of this particular nature then what could be the comparison so just to have your own self uh, diagnosis by yourself and comparing on objective pattern of something uh, how much percentage of uh, effectiveness of uh, efficiency in the lighting pattern is there so 
Based on that thing, you can just compare your own two designs or just you can make a correction for anybody, uh, anybody's design worldwide that somebody will say, uh, say you that you are a lighting expert or you can design doors and windows optimally uh, and you've got uh, uh, expertise in that. Then people will be sending across you, you know, on email to drawings and they will, uh, they will be happy to share uh, the finances as well as the, uh, your, your comments on, on any of their designs because uh comparing two or three or four aspects of their design or any any uh, anything which you can just uh, suggest them will make their design more lively so they need not to focus on the uh, the the uh, a small part of designing but they will focus on their bigger bigger design and they will assign for uh, fee checking or just wetting of design that whatever they have, I have taken that whether it is right or not or within the limit so legally, as well as aesthetically, as well as uh, <coughs> making a, a lesser amount of sick building syndrome, this software could be helpful. I, I, I cannot say that this will be the only uh, choice, but this is one of the choices, uh, I suppose. So uh, mostly, if you if you are through with that, you can see that every area is uh, there. We'll just go to another uh, real life example so that you can ascertain. Now here, one more thing is there. This lighting is available. Okay, well, variety of lights are available. We'll go into detail also uh, at some point of time uh, today itself. And then uh, calculation of object at a particular time on inclined plane, on vertical plane or something like that. Every object can be calculated according to that. And then uh, you can export your model to various other softwares and documentation is the legal compliance for any green building like it could be Edge or Graha or Jam or uh, you can call it IGPC or it could be one more lead. Uh, for their documentation, this documentation uh, would be admissible. Okay, of, of course it depends whether that is approved one or not, including ECBC. But for the sake of understanding, this software is versatile. Otherwise, you can go for any paid version or trial version because uh, for practicing, that trial version doesn't work because. It uh, the hardly one month elapsed uh, after some time you are engaged here and there and again you have to change your machine or format your machine. Otherwise, the second time that cannot be uh, installed in, a, uh, in your machine. So I'm making a freeware move to your view and then once you are through with that, you can adopt any of the softwares which uh, we have mentioned. For, for, a, for a perfect free working, this, this could be one of the options which provide enough information to, uh, to provide you uh, all type of data which is required. So for entire documentation, we'll just press this button with a single click. Whatever we have just placed uh, uh, in terms of graphics, it will be automatically placed in the uh, written format. So uh, single click, yeah. I think it has generated a one page one of 299. So 299 pages report is there. Okay, so we'll just uh, go for that. Just, just pardon me. This is Pandya Ji's house. Preliminary remarks. Content wise, you see that the very well indented, very well drafted report is there. Content, cover page, <laughs> preliminary remarks, contents, description, liminar list, product data sheet. And then you will work out that uh, con uh, content continued. Site one, it, as this is only site in the, the because it is residential in nature, only one building is there. But otherwise, it suppose it is a university campus, then uh, there could be two uh, offset campus could be there. Uh, one across this highway, one uh, extension on other side. So site one, site two, building one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Story wise. Content wise, room wise, room one, room two, room three, up to 77 room it will go. Okay, so what description is there? This is merely a content. Now, luminar list. The entire house will be illuminated with the help of 51 uh, lakhs lumens, or uh, total wattage is 5 kilowatt for lighting for this four story house, only for lighting. Okay. Luminous efficacy is 102 lumen per watt. The, what is required is for as, as per ECVC, it should be 70 uh, lumen per watt. Okay, so it is more than that. Now, manufacturer is the one piece required for Alto uh, Company Limited, article number FL, article name is full this thing. The uh, luminar is of 15 watt, 
generates 873 lumens and uh, luminous efficacy is 58 lumens per watt. Okay. Arcules, uh, this is article number this. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, article name. It is hardly four watt lamp, uh, generates 400 lumens and 100 lumens per watt is the luminous efficacy of this particular lamp. 11 pieces of bright spectra lighting of LED lamp, a Senna wall of very high luminous efficacy of 133 lumens per watt. Like uh, it has got a uh, grievance article number this, several uh, different article, the brand is same, 2111113 pieces of uh, light C4, and this is uh, 3.5 watt of 36 lumens per watt. So this is a very inefficient one, but for decoration, we are taking it. For building area method, we can just ensure that uh, how much uh, building area method wise that uh, that is permissible limit of uh, our water consumption. So luminar list we have just seen a modular one, uh, 22 numbers, 15 numbers, true number, and then uh, respective data of that thing. So it has generated with a simple click. So around 59 pieces of Philips of this make of 14 watt, 50 watt of Philips of this make. Two watt of Philips, this thing, two numbers of Philips of 22 watts. So almost you will see that how many luminaires are there. Suppose total miller in total, if it is there, say something like different, 300 different type of luminaires are there. Okay, the entire single house. Suppose you have got a resort, a five star hotel resort. You could be having something like uh, something like 2,800 different type of luminaires in total number of capacity which is being installed uh, outside as well as inside could be something like uh, uh, 78,000 of 2,800 uh, spread across the uh, 68 uh, acres is sprawling uh, around around the campus. So uh, this will generate us with a single click that building wise, floor wise, room wise, all a certain and phase wise also. Suppose this building is coming this time, this building is coming. So indentation. Uh, indeed, you can raise to the vendors and that, that can be supplied. And for a storekeeper, it is very easy to operate. For electrical contractor, very easy to operate. Just to see that mix and matches are not there, whatever was there, which was supposed to be placed here, has been placed elsewhere, is ruled out with the help of this report. So with a single click, you see that you are not providing any information that what should be the left side uh, margin, right side margin, or photo should be there or not. Irrespective of that, it's just providing information about alcohol limited of uh, what is the photometric chart of that, what is the intensity of light, and uh, everything in detail. Just my mini, I would like to minimize this. Yeah. So uh, their intensity up at various levels, that can be ascertained of this every luminar. So I'm not going to detail that we have seen this also. OK, spreading. So how much pattern of this that is there, you can just uh, go through it and you can just work it out. So product data sheet of each and every luminar is placed over here because this is a 299 page report. So whatever you require, you just make a PDF for that particular respective page and just uh, submit it to the uh, authority, submit it to the uh, <coughs> vendors, some, uh, to electrical contractors, to the managers, like it is a, a Philips brand. All these luminaires, different luminaires are being displayed before you. I'm not going into detail of that because that is not required as such. But what is required uh, is to see that what this report can generate or benefit for your uh, documentation. Hopefully, I'm just uh, making a right sense uh, to just have a, and just I'm uh, scrolling it down because there are say, 400 different type of luminaires. So instead of uh, looking at each one of them, just I would like to go a little faster. I don't know how fast it could be. So uh, yeah, now this is energy evolution that is providing. If you see room wise, room number one, two, three, four, five, it has become actual. Room list, all room list it is mentioning. Now uh, building one, story one. Luminous efficacy that is mentioned uh, in case of uh, uh, building one, story one, total number of eight pieces, 26 pieces of Philips, and this is eight pieces of bright, bright spectra that is required. So building wise, floor wise, layout plan, it is mentioning how much distance it is there from, from center. Automatically it is generating all, all location plan. I'll go. Uh, 
I'll cross to this level. What next is available to this report? So layout plan, it has been mentioned automatically from your model and model comes from your uh, DXF file. So it's very easy to look at everything. Just yeah. Now this is saying room number 36. Suppose you, if you've got a space function method of corridor or something like that, it is showing the lighting power density which is required to be there, 5.26 watt per square meter. For room, it is suppose, suppose this is a conference room and it says that it should not be more than seven. Here it comes out to be 5.26, then it's a workable. But it says that it should be uh, having a proper lux level also. So uh, first of all, lux level should be achieved, then the energy efficiency should be obtained. So uh, your lighting power density room wise it is showing 8.79, 1.18, 24.96 in room number 44. So this is if it is not permissible as per the space function method, then you will have to redesign this light. Okay. Now next to that. If you skip that, then this is a layout plan. Going down. I can share you with this uh, report also. It's a, uh, you can call it dummy report at, uh, at present, but it is on working on the uh, real life uh, example. So we go down, down, down because there are n number of uh, places. Variety of information that is there, but of multi uh, repetitious nature because of it is providing for each and every location. So, at what height the, the luminaire is there, x, y coordination, coordinates, everything is mentioned. Okay, so up to that level, uh, the information is being published. Just to merely repeat for every area because there are more than 77 areas in small orbit. So same information for each and every area it is being mentioned. And then uh, uh, there is a detail about the glossary that what, what is the meaning of this thing and that thing. So this is one of the examples which you have tried. Now if you just close it and we will just go for a new one. Suppose this is Project Goa. We'll have to wait till the drawing getting lo gets loaded. It could be a small house. You can model it. And you can see it uh, story wise. It, is out, it has got only one story. You can see it. This is a skylight. This is a lighting pattern. These are the lights. Room wise, you can go for. All the information regarding light and the position that is being displayed. So what you can do with the software that is being presented and this is a calculation software, it's not a rendering software. So uh, it is going to calculate everything. The rendering software doesn't calculate all these things in detail. And then uh, you can just go for any any kind of uh, documentation for this as well. So here I'll select it. 27 page report will be prepared. Yeah, we sure we can take no shoes. 
whatever uh, we can do, we can do it right away. No issues because till then the project will also get uh, loaded. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Uh, dear participants, it's a time. Uh, we may resume the session. Sir, you please.
I am taking another project of uh, street lighting so that you can just uh, uh, ensure that uh, outside exterior lighting can also be planned with this uh, software. It, it will take a little time. So we'll go for construction. And you see, you can see that this is a colony in which uh, these are plots and these are roads. And you, you have water. You can see then these are the street lights. This uh, clubhouse kind of a thing. This is these are the parks and these are the plots. Mm -hmm. Suppose I would like to make a documentation of this. I'm not calculating the very detail of over here because it has been already done. So uh, this is also a real life. Uh, Ekatma Parisar is the name of that government colony. 16 page report will be generated. And what that is displaying that we would like to discuss. For exterior lighting, because for landscape, for a street light, the, everything has been mentioned for roads. Okay, so this is uh, the view, which is automatically taken by the software. And then it is showing. This is a beautiful report with a single click. That 10 pieces of bright spectra lighting of Pentium 25, 9 pieces of thorn light, 49 pieces of thorn lights of 94 watt, 134 watt, 220 watt has been utilized in the project. So this is the street light, LED light. What is the uh, display spectrum? Uh, that is a photometric chart has been displayed. Uh, the description of the bright spectral light, particular light has been mentioned. For this thorn line, that is also mentioned, whatever that has been chosen. The sp uh, spread and intensity can be seen from here. Again, this is there. And locations of these street poles has been, lim uh, plan yeah, has been mentioned. So what is the mounting height? 6.4 meter that has been mentioned. X, Y coordinate has been mentioned and luminar number has been mentioned in the report automatically. So description wise, if you see the road width, the roadway is, is there, uh, lumin, luminar inter distance, the 15 meter that has been mentioned. And then apart from that, road width is one, target is this much candela per square meter. For check, all these are passing. Okay, calculated how much lux level that is required. So this lux contour is being generated from this light. This is more intense, this is dispersing, and these are uh, affected from both sides. So this is lux level 103, 135, 141. So minimum should be 100 lux on the road. So 110, 110, 97, at very at the distant age, it is 90, it's marginally that way. Uh, a little lesser. So this is a grid contour of uh, lux level. So uh, you can just see the uh, illuminance curves or contour curves. So this is being automatically generated. So if any road accident happens and suppose somebody says that that was hardly 50 lux, you can just submit your drawing or authority can ask that whether it is as per the uh, norms or not. Okay, so these are the lux levels which are being presented, distances. Uh, these are uh, falling short, like uh, 6.4, 8.1, uh, these kind of uh, uh, dry roadway. Dry roadway means pathway. So this much amount of lux level that is required, that is also presented. And then all, all everywhere this luminar, uh, the effectiveness is being 
misplaced. So you know that for pathway it is five lux kind of a thing. So if it is a pathway, then this these uh, are uh, passing in that limit. So this is the, this was the uh, report for that. So uh, with the help of these, uh, you can just uh, reassure that uh, one more project if it is available, then I would like to show. Uh, it takes time to uh, load the project. Problem is only that, nothing else apart from that. Uh, just a moment, file, open, uh, and just a moment. So we, see, we have seen house, we have seen this. So one more project is there, it is get, getting loaded over here. more minutes to go. So uh, with the help of whatever the output of uh, lighting power density room wise, we can just uh, jot down from these reports and you can feed it into the Equest software. So there will go again in the Equest and we'd like to change some figures over there. One more project that we can discuss over here. That, that is a, a flight. Uh, of say, I think three or four bedroom flat is there. Now you can see over here. Again, room wise, you can go for. Basic furniture layout you can also place. Light effect scenes can also be created, but it takes time, so we are not taking uh, today's now. So here the values are there. Now, whatever the light that is there, if you'd like to change from Philips to something else, or if you'd like to change the from Philips only. So we'll just go for that. It will give you a history, favorite, folder, and catalog. History means whatever you have chosen earlier, it will check from that. So these kind of uh, focusing light or bollards or these decorative lamps are there, or these are the ceiling mounted ones. So in addition to that, you can go for catalogs as well. So click, uh, the, there are two catalogs which are available. One is of Philips and another one is of another company. So Philips wise, if you would like to go, uh, are you able to see the Philips uh, catalog? Philips choose laminar type uh, semi because the screen change is there. Hello. Philips uh, choose laminar type you are able to see. Fantastic. So there could be indoor lightings, there could be outdoor lightings. So if you go for selecting any one of them, then we have got a down lights, highway, batons, freestanding, uh, projections, or wall mounted, uh, resist, exit emergency. These kind of luminaires are there. In case of down lights, we have got another set of down lighters with us. So it is just generating that. So there are variety of down lighters with variety of uh, power densities and luminous and their, their uh, lux levels, everything is mentioned. Okay, we can choose anyone. We can export to our model. Okay, so suppose you would like to go for this thing, then uh, what kind of software to you would like to uh, export with? So if it is a dialer, you can choose that, or you can just uh, uh, location, it is on saving on the desktop, I can save it. So I can utilize that uh, luminar from there. 
to how to export any uh, model. No, sorry, how to export any luminar to a model is by this means. Select uh, uh, luminar. Otherwise, you can go to manufacturer data sheet also. So it must be saved over there, and then you can close it. Otherwise, you can go for changing of any of the light. Or you can import from another file as well. So there could be a number of different files which can be supplied by the uh, supplier. If it is not added into the <coughs> uh, their catalog, then they can provide uh, information on the email and you can just add on from there to, to your uh, model. So uh, uh, if you just go back and then see that. Uh, just a moment. For outdoor lightings, we have got suppose bollards. So we have got say four, five, six bollards are there. You can choose any any one of them depending on the requirement, size, shape, and everything that is also available. You can export it, you can save it, or you can keep on adding your catalog also, your own catalog for that. So this is one of the files. Otherwise, you can just go for uh, from here, you can go to manufacturer data sheet. So Almost 300 different manufacturers, leading manufacturers, uh, data. This, this is available to you. From Emerson to uh, everyone. So we can move on to anyone. All these catalogs are available before you. And you can choose any one of them. You can uh, give any any catalog reference number also, and uh, from from their website you can just uh, loop into this list also. So all these variety of lights can be brought down, and that can be added to your model. You can just uh, assume. So going to manufacturer data sheet that we have seen, how to bring the light, how to add it into your system. That is that is uh, we have just uh, see the glimpse of that. Suppose on some point of time we we have got a day long exercise with us, and we'll just uh, log in from uh, both the uh, mode that is mobile as well as laptop, and uh, we shall share our information on mobile, and we shall do our practice on uh, this online version. And suppose uh, God permits us, then we'll be having a uh, offline meeting, and then we can discuss it uh, in detail with all these things. If you got any question or any doubt or anything, not today, but any point of time, I'll share my WhatsApp number as well. I will, we can discuss at any point of time, any kind of information, uh, suggestions or improvements or stuck up somewhere. Uh, everywhere, it's uh, totally, uh, completely free of charge. The government exercise, nothing private entities are involved in it. So uh, there's no, no point of charging or something like that. Uh, you, you are totally free to uh, approach EMC as well as any of the presenters and they would be happy to answer your any of the queries. Just pay, put your just uh, reference number that we are we have attended EMC and something and then we require this information. So any requirement which is shareable, which is uh, which needs attention or uh, anything which is uh, required by you can be shared at any point of time within within a reasonable time that will be answered well. So uh, these catalogs, you can just uh, bring any light and you can just design your light accordingly. So manufacturer point, we also seen ex uh, documentation seen, export we have seen, calculation of object seen. Light wise, it is a difficult one to uh, de deal in detail as of now. But you, if you just see over here, I'll just make you uh, a little move inside the uh, model. Philips, we have already chosen. The arrangements, you can just, uh, any kind of arrangement in any point uh, sort of grid, you can just provide information over here. So number of luminaires instead of two, if you provide three, it will be change in the model. The three now instead of two, it is three. Okay, name it is there. You know? Like uh, if it is there, the length is given, the start point, X, Y, Z coordinate has been given. The rotation of light, if it is there, then you can just provide any rotation to any light. If it is rotable, rotatable, then you can just rotate it to any angle from here. Uh, position wise, you can change to any position length. Uh, or otherwise, you can mounting type. You can change to any mounting type to any any height, whatever you would like to have. Or uh, energy consumption and cost-wise, you can also have a, a data regarding that, and you can just uh, ascertain for that. So many 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 features which are available over here. In case of construction, also in case of project, also many many things like latitude, longitude-wise. Suppose it is a Chennai. Uh, if it is available, then we can provide latitude, longitude, or we can if Chennai is available, then. 
or it could be a madras because it's a so madras is available okay uh, so latitude longitude that comes automatically and then uh, north alignment and everything you can change you can change the uh, time zone also the time zone that is something like kolkata kind of thing so chennai kolkata is there for i think uh, bombay is available not the mumbai b o m bombay so geographical location wise where you have got a, uh, that much amount of light from uh, uh, solar insulation from one direction uh, like in shillong or in uh, meghalaya it could be a different kind of a uh, Uh, ambient lighting, so that lighting will be automatically addressed to this thing. Then uh, maintenance factor that point uh, eight uh, is the maintenance factor. One is the ideal one, so lesser than that. It, uh, suppose it is burning hours are ten thousand has been written, so probably it will be burned out in eight uh, thousand uh, burning hours. So you can provide over there. So suppose it is not a branded one, you can provide a multi maintenance factor to point two, point three, point four. It depends uh, again. so maintenance is also detailed one as well as fixed one so fixed maintenance like you change the fixture or lamp at least every 3 years or something like that so you uh, meanwhile you can just choose any kind of a mode that how much effectiveness suppose it's a heavy industry then of course with the help of um, uh, with the with the fumes and everything the uh, lamps have got much more maintenance so you can just provide information uh, depending on uh, the, the the luminar based on your experience so that is there and apart from that uh, if you would like to understand that we have just calculated then this is calculation of object various object at any inclusion level height offset and uh, inclusion of the offset that are uh, basically available to you you can provide any information to that so there are multiple things uh, we cannot because we get confused if you enter into any of the era which is which is have, have not multiple options to choose from so better to just uh, have a a uh, glimpse of uh, things like calculations uh, or camera wise you can just uh, focus it uh, in the eye of camera what the project will be seen you can set the angle and everything and you can just uh, work it out any any of the uh, requirement for any particular uh, view and then we have just seen all these things uh, uh, lighting scene it is creating suppose it is workable then we'll find it out It, it requires a, a two three minutes four minutes sometimes ten minutes so we cannot hang out for that so I restrict it though it's a sixteen GB machine RAM but uh, it requires time to perform because the calculations are huge and it's not that quick as good quick as uh, uh, Equest so suppose it generates then it will be beautiful for us. I think it will require two, three, four, five minutes. Two, three minutes, and we'll wait for it. We'll see that. Had it been a four hours kind of a dedicated daylight simulation, then we could have done for other projects also, and we could have, could have brought in the drawing file, and we could have worked it with that. Would have been working with that. it's a very simple uh, user interface uh, it's a just linear one one by one if you choose one then these tools are there one by one and uh, this these are basically positions by virtue of action it's very simple software that right? Uh, 
Uh, if you have got any question, meanwhile it uh, gets loaded. We can take uh, one or two questions if it is there. Yeah. No, it is not, but the, uh, all the approved software are mostly basically on trial version or paid version. So this is a freeware. You can just demonstrate. You can uh, get ready yourself with the help of all the facilities which are being uh, available. Uh, and then you can jump to any of the trial version or any paid version of other software. So uh, should I answer? Yeah. First of all, uh, let uh, us create a vertical partition in our mind that ECBC code is only for commercial building, first of all. So it is not applicable for residential. OK, the new code which will come that has been launched already that is called Eco Neva Sahita or ENS is in short. That will be the residential code. OK. Uh, second thing, if it is a hostel kind of a thing, and suppose there are five uh, uh, different uh, uh, floors are there, comprising of 10, 10 rooms each, and uh, five different owners are there, and five, five different uh, meters are there, then each individual entity will be considered if it is a hostel, because hostel is a commercial entity, and that should individual should have got a 100 kilowatt connection or 50 kilowatt as per the respective code provisions. So that will not cover under that. So it should be a sizable project for commercial building. And uh, don't restrict yourself to any of the uh, level of uh, uh, questions that it is easily or it could be very simple one. The simple one could be very tedious one or ridiculous for somebody else. OK, uh, while learning, we should be very much comfortable while asking any of the questions in any pattern in any format. For implementation strategy, for learning exercise, for anything, you can just uh, Yeah, uh, there are two kind of uh, comforts which are required in the building. Buildings are basically created for comforts. You will agree to it. Huh? OK, so there is one is called visual comfort. Another is called thermal comfort. From a glazed door, you get light also and you just uh, uh, improve a barrier between inside and outside so far as the thermal comfort is concerned. In case of opaque door, it it creates a it doesn't provide any visual light, but it creates a barrier between outside environment and inside environment different than the volume unit. Wall has got different thermal value and door has got different thermal value. So whatever, even uh, in case of Equest, uh, we haven't gone to that level, but uh, even the blind and their fabric and their color tone, everything matters a lot so far as the thermal uh, transmittance or the ref uh, reflectivity is concerned. So door itself, the, the type of door, whether it is of aluminium, whether it is of be it opaque one, but it will not matter a matter of concern for visual comfort, but definitely for a thermal comfort, that is a barrier between external environment and the inside environment. So uh, opaque door of variety thickness of type of construction that has to be incorporated for a proper uh, assessment of uh, thermal comfort inside the building. Hope I could answer. You got the answer? <laughs> not much, not much. Almost no, almost much. But you can put some sort of, because by campus designing, you can put some sort of uh, uh, influence into that, but not much. For that, you, you need to have a CFD analysis based uh, software that is called uh, your design builder kind of thing. 
it is not a CFD software. Problem is that. You can put a tree kind of thing or some structure or something like that, but very, with a very difficult pattern. Uh, so we have got a rendered image over here. So you can see that uh, with the light scene, it creates, it takes some time and the, the, the patient goes off and it takes around more than 20, 25 minutes to 30 minutes sometimes. So <laughs> and simultaneously, we cannot do much of the task because the computer gets things. We cannot go with the presentation again, get back to that and uh, simulation is uh, going in uh, at the back end. So it is not possible. So now you see that uh, the, this is illumination level from this uh, uh, lighting source. And lux level is also mentioned over here. So you can check out the lux level as well. Okay, so room wise, you can go for like if you want to go for room number ten, then it is available. So it has got better image than earlier one. Now you see, and the effect on the lighting and the 0.8 meter above the floor level, we have just created a lux level also. So if you provide the information, it will give you for every every room. So if a, a space function method that is required. Suppose if you'd like to zoom, then it comes out to be something like uh, 60, 70, 80 lux chaos pass uh, uh, for, the, for this particular room. So this information can be fed. Either you can do it from the documentation part. We'll just see that 14, this is the kitchen. Now you can see it. You can provide timing and everything, but again, that, that takes time, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes. So that can be done at uh, our desk, but not at the presentation time. So this lux level uh, required at the, this is a almost uh, 250, this is 300 lux at the dining uh, table. Okay, and this is something like 500 lux over, over and above because three concentrated lights are focused on the uh, island uh, kitchen. Okay, and this is the, these are the three dedicated lights. You see that the steps in fall ceiling, you can just create very easily or uh, any, uh, pattern of light uh, eccentrically or specifically designed, like in case of a corner sofa, need not to put the, the as per the geometrical pattern of the room, uh, but at, at per the uh, as and when needed, you can place your light in the software uh, uh, meticulously. So that is the beauty of the software that you can just uh, make a, your own model with the help of this thing. And this is very fast as compared to other, other things. And this is being updated very fast, but uh, the pattern of calculation is something like that. it's not matching exactly as, as per the ECBC code. So that is why it's not been included. Probably after some time, something will happen or sub correction factor would be uh, admissible and people would be able to do it that way. So this is this is one of the uh, patterns. So this is not a rendering software. Again, I will urge you that if you would like to have any confusion regarding that, uh, why it is not showing like this or that, but to the best of its knowledge, to the best, best of its ability, it's providing whatever the calculation part. This is very perfect thing as compared to whatever that has been rendered or uh, just focused on, on the wall. So this is, uh, we have to consider it in mind, that is a calculation software. And uh, whatever the calculation you find with this lamp, uh, when you put your Lux uh, meter over here or your mobile over here, you will find the same Lux level which has been created by the software. That is why this, this is very famous. And you can do it with any any of the uh, catalogs, 300 catalogs or any of the catalogs which are not available over here. And you can bring any of the files and you can just uh, make a provision for that. So if you've got a, we have got a patient, then we can just go for the previous one. If it is uh, available, then we can render that as well. So that we can see the effect of street lighting also. So for this Ekatma Parisa, I'm just loading it. I'll, if the light scene is there, then this light scene can be created and we'll see that. Uh, The only thing that it's uh, take little time as compared to request to load the software. But we'll be having a, a glimpse of uh, what can be achieved with the software. It's taking hopefully within within 30, 35 seconds it will come up. Yeah. Again, if you've got any question, you please 
put it in the chat box. Uh, we can address that. Meanwhile, it is taking time of any nature of any submission pattern or any calculation prescriptive requirement, binary requirement. It is doing fast, comparatively faster. Hopefully you are getting real information that by virtue of doing this exercise in this pattern, you would be able to create your own models because modeling is an essential way of doing the compliance mechanism for ECDC. Comparatively, EQST is very sim uh, simple. support to complete. Yeah. Now you see over here. The various lux level on the street and their calculation. So in the day mode, in the night mode, you can create your uh, influences with the help of light. More detailing, I'm not going into detail because again, it takes time. But uh, these features can be generated and these lux level can be ascertained in the, in the presentation format as well. So there are a variety of things which are available. You can select, deselect. This is an editable uh, view also. I think it, you can create many, many of those light scenes. You can set the calculation of the a standard or fast mode also. This is a fast mode. This is a standard mode. You can exercise, keep on exercising on these of the tips. Only direct light without object of the furniture with the calculation of surfaces. All these things are uh, available to choose from. But again, uh, two, three, four minutes to jump from one mode to another mode. It always takes. And then this, these are the building outdoor street lighting inside of building. You can just separate it, both of them. This is the building is also there. So you can go into detail of that and you can benefit. You can see the uh, display options, variety of display options to choose from. So these are the various manual modes and uh, these are the color temperatures are available. And you can just adapt for any, any other things. So there are multiple things, not only this, but there are lighting scene. You just create change according to your needs. Uh, but every time it takes around two to three minutes, four minutes, five minutes kind of thing. So you can just put it down. It's very easily built. In a single go, it can be installed with a very, uh, I can share you uh, with sample drawings also if you wish. You can just play around with this uh, files and you can just uh, make your own model at some point of time and start creating the things. So hope uh, uh, we could conclude this. Uh, uh, if you have any question pertaining to dialects or any lighting simulation pattern, how to calculate, how to this thing, documentation will provide every information. You can take this data and feed it into the Equus software. So if it is over, we have got no question that we can uh, jump to the uh, formats uh, which need to be presented to the authority for uh, for making a declaration regarding the variety of uh, uh, prescriptive requirements. Now, there are some formats which are being provided in the national uh, uh, code and similar could be in the uh, Kerala CBC code also. And then uh, in the summary wise, you can just provide the project address. These are the written formats. OK, so you have to either uh, uh, make it in word or uh, just make a hand uh, written approach. So suppose this is a building of 80 meter by 40 meter having a skylight of say something like uh, four or five of uh, Skylight 800 
uh, is there a complete dimension and then 100 square meter on each floor eight total are eight floors are there so 800 square meters the skylight area otherwise you got a, a total number of project built up area of 20 400 uh, 24,800 square meter of this project area. Project above grade area is something like uh, one basement is there. So 21,700 is the project uh, above grade. Grade means uh, plinth. Uh, project conditioned area, the space conditioning is not there in the stair lobby and uh, corridor, something like that. So 15,000 is the space conditioned area. Applicant name is the Mr. Biju Thomas, Church Colony, Cozy Court, Kerala Estate, Warm and Humid. But this project is at Calicut, Kerala Estate. Okay. So uh, this is the compliance. Then you have to see that the, what kind of building is there. The business, education, shopping complex, assembly. So the business uh, building is there. Whether it is a new building or it's addition alteration or self-occupied, current shell. Current shell means uh, tenant and owner. And then uh, mixed use kind of building. So it's a self-occupied new building. It would be ECBC compliant, not the ECBC plus or super ECBC. EPI ratio in case of a prescriptive requirement, it is not there, but in case of simulation software, you have to write down the EPI ratio. EPI ratio can be calculated. We have seen that uh, 18, uh, 18 lakhs or something like that uh, uh, units per year divided by built up area gives you the EPI ratio. So it is there. Uh, uh, that, that, that is the EPI, or the EPI ratio is with respect to a standard building. Uh, that is the golden product uh, building uh, that can be. Uh, obtained with the help of a parametric run in the eQuest software, which is an advanced version of eQuest uh, entity. Then uh, compliance approach is prescriptive method. It is not whole rebuilding performance method. Had it been a whole building performance method, you will have to just uh, uh, take the printout of all the, um, uh, the reports of eQuest or this dialogues uh, kind of similar kind of uh, approved software, and then you just tear it off, get it signed, and just uh, put it across. And the signature will be valid for uh, B triple E. Uh, certified person on these papers. And then uh, there is one examination is going to be conducted. Uh, one, one who takes that examination, that is called energy auditor building examination somewhere around three, four months down the line that, that is about to uh, commence. And then somebody who passes that examination, then he can also sign that on the piece of paper. Uh, after getting registration with the principal and uh, I think EMC. So total vertical fenestration area is vertical wall that has been mentioned. Gross exterior wall area is this much. So window to wall ratio is something like total uh, wall area divided by total uh, exterior area. Not the window area, but fenestration means a structural glazing kind of a thing, fixed glazing that is also permissible over here. So 31.25 is the percentage. 40% is the upper limit. So it is passing that limit. Apart from that, a skylight calculation is 100 square meter on the top. Uh, total roof area is 80 meter by 40 meter, that is 3200 square meter. So it comes out to be 3.125, and 5% is the maximum permissible limit under the ECVC. So it is also a skylight is also under permissible limit. Now, wall has got a uh, minimum uh, U factor, has got 0 0.40, roof U insulation 0.33. So, daylight summary is that how much 52% area uh, is uh, daylight uh, at the 90% of the time throughout the year. 40% is the minimum threshold limit. So it is crossing that limit, but it's passing that also. The cool roof, the SRI tile bags of JMAG is there. 79% of solar reflectance, 60% is required. It has got 79%. Emittance of that uh, SRI uh, tiles is basically 93%. Minimum required is 90%. Similarly, wall assembly, gypsum plaster, AAC block, expanded polystyrene, uh, and cement plaster. There are R values and respective calculating this R value to U value and assembly U factor is 0.36, maximum limit is 0 0.40. So this is passing the limit over there. So 18 mm gypsum plaster, uh, uh, 250 mm ASC block, uh, 12 mm uh, extruded polystyrene and cement plaster of 18 uh, mm thickness. So that is there. Similarly, for a skylight that is there, U factor is available. So maximum is 5. So it is not, uh, I think, 4. Point, uh, uh, two five kind of a thing, so it is not crossing that limit. So all uh, activities which has been mentioned over here uh, can be worked out with this uh, um, checklist is there. U factor, SSGC factor, uh, all these things have to be calculated or can be drawn from the technical data sheet of uh, manufacturer or can be calculated with the if the the assembly of various uh, roof or wall is there so each and every component their value can be had from either from the code or it can be from the technical data sheet of the manufacturer and then you can just 
so give a, a reference plant attached to that. So instead of only uh, putting uh, uh, plan elevation section and to uh, detail about that thing, uh, you have to put these all these uh, formats also along with that. And these formats will again have an enclosures of technical data sheet, drawing sheets, and everything in detail. So something around 50, 60 enclosures to the drawing and to the uh, application format will be there to understand. And this will be exercise at the initial level, but uh, after some time, it it will be very very easy to understand that whatever that is going to put, we are going to put in the building should be adopted first of all, and it should not be left for uh, for uh, sine die that whether whether it will come or not. So opaque wall, vertical fenestration, manufacturer technical inspection enclosed, highlighting the UPVC frame and glass type listed. So you have to put two three pages of this manufacturer data sheet, this particular sheet which we are see, seeing. In addition to the uh, trade off method, it is not applicable. Or uh, comfort system, we are we haven't discussed comfort system today. We'll not go into that detail. So we'll go for lighting. So for lighting, uh, comfort system going on. All details are there. Lighting controls and summary. What we have seen. This is the project detail we have already placed. Then the uh, uh, ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. This is the allowed water uh, wattage uh, per square meter, 9.2 for the. Uh, uh, for the commercial complex of office in nature, areas have been mentioned. Allowed uh, allowed area is this much, so 197 kilowatt of these uh, uh, allowed power density is there. So we have just put uh, something like number of fixtures 157 of the 15 watt, and what proposed is 16 watt because one one watt is consumed in the uh, control gear of that uh, luminaire. So that you can see over here, executive cabin that has got 20 watt, 22 uh, watt. And then again, in the canopy, you have got uh, this much amount of area, this much amount of light can be put in the canopy, front, front facade, landscape, and driveway. So these are the allowable uh, uh, LPD. These are the respective area of canopy, facade, landscape, and driveway. So this could be a total allowed wattage, and then 38 kilowatt can be for the exterior lighting. So that can be uh, displayed over here. Proposed lighting wattage Philips of T1250 is the model number. The total number of fixtures are 2200. Wattage are three wattage, 6600. Fipro of uh, uh, 586. Osram of F2390. These are the model max number. These are number of fixtures. This is the wattage, and total is 23. 23 we are proposing, and allowed is 38. So we are on the safer limit. And then again, checklist for all. Uh, Lighting controls, automatic shut off, or exterior lighting, or ex exit sign, and everything that has been mentioned. So that you have to just provide, and information has to be furnished with the. Now this electrical, which is not in the today's scope, so this is one of the uh, thing which we have to see that these formats have to be submitted along with the uh, these uh, DCR formats. So DCR formats are there, form number one to thirteen. There could be less in numbers in Kerala. Uh, it depends. Yesterday you must have seen that how many formats were there. For Kerala State ECBC rules, which you have uh, learnt between 12:30 to 1 p.m. In, uh, in yesterday's session. So uh, this is uh, a specimen I am talking about. It's for uh, making uh, an application for seeking a building permit. So this is the DCR format. DCR format is for basically for commissioner. That is ULB's head. Uh, the place is Daman. Uh, name of the city is Mota Daman. Name of the state is uh, Dadar Nagar and Haveli. This is a UT. So. Application for erection of energy conservation building code, plot number 249, block number C, scheme number 134, street Y road, Mota Daman. So I'm just making uh, uh, an application with Mr. B Triple A certified person or energy auditor building. Uh, the person's name is Mr. N M Butch. His registration number is DDDH NH 03 2020 EA. So uh, this is the honor name, Mr. S N Yadav. He is making a request uh, to the authority that my building should be erected. It is as per the ECBC norms. So form number two from SN Yadav that we have uh, complied with the ECBC rules and everything is under control. From number three, uh, which will be uh, from Impanel Energy Auditor Building or B Triple A uh, Impanel person. So similar kind of this format with the signature that uh, we have taken cognizance of every uh, specification of ECBC code and the buildings and uh, their components have been designed as per the uh, their their uh, norms. So again, uh, some omissions are there, non-compliance is there. So again, uh, 
change of EPS instead of XPS, it will be notified by the uh, auditor to the owner that you have not followed uh, following the things which has been mentioned in the, during the course of initial discussions. The use of uh, variable frequency drive motors is not there. Instead, the simple con controller are there, so they will put it in, in the writing and they will say that uh, kindly instruct your design team to carry out uh, within within a month or something like that. So this is again format. One format is you, you can see that uh, impedance energy auditor is making a uh, omission compliance report that we have just observed and everything is in order. So one format is like this. Another format is that simple is that uh, notice for commencement of construction work. So again, this format will be given by the owner to the uh, uh, authority having jurisdiction or that is called uh, municipal commissioner. Now, certificate of inspection, if you just see that the enclosing uh, documents for compliance in respect of uh, this thing, uh, ECBC code, that will be compliance form that we have seen uh, the earlier, the just previously this, this envelope survey we've seen. We just enclose this thing with uh, over here with this signature. So this format, DCR format, as well as the compliance form which we have just seen over here, that both will be attached with this uh, construction permit along with the your drawings, basic drawings. So all these things uh, which are not there in place, AAC blocks are not being uh, utilized instead of rash bricks are utilized. The ordered HVAC system has got lesser COP than required one. The transfer has got 50% loading and 100% loading losses are more than mandatory norm. Purchase order should be modified. These things will be notified to the owner as well as to the authority time to time by the auditor. So uh, check and balances will be always there that once the building has been designed, whatever is effective of design, whatever that is being constructed, that will be taken care by the, the uh, by the person who is with the uh, licensed holder of BEEE or energy auditor buildings. So all these things, at last, the auditor is going to certify that building envelope, lighting controls, comfort system and control, electrical control and microclimate uh, that 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 has been just uh, list of compliance, final compliance is being uh, uh, supplied by the energy auditor buildings to the owner. And then finally, uh, inspection would be done uh, and a period of uh, three months time will be there. If, it, uh, if the building is not properly sealed against leakages, then this information is there and three month time will be given by the auditor. And then finally, occupancy certificate will be issued by, if everything is in right, then by the uh, chief city engineer or chief engineer of uh, municipal corporation for the copy of certified complaints form as well. So this is the final completion certificate of occupancy certificate. It will be there. And then uh, periodically uh, the uh, auditor after two years that uh, uh, or after one year, it will say that the performance index is 0.92 kind of a thing and EPI report is also included. So even after one year, two years, three years down the line, this uh, auditor will come and that they will inspect the building. So here uh, you see the DCR compliance format from 1 to 13. There could be exemption in some of the states or they can be added at any point of time. And if you just uh, practice not only in your state uh, to the adjoining state also, that th these formats could be applicable, uh, applicable there. Uh, one or two or three forms could be uh, ruled out by any authority just for the sake of uh, easiness. So uh, these two formats I wanted to discuss you with you, that envelope summary that you have to fill in, and then application format like this, and then uh, the simulation report which you have seen in the eQuest. So uh, if you would like to go back to eQuest again, the eQuest doesn't generate that kind of simple report because it comprises of multiple pages of 200, 300, 4 pages, and you have to just select the, any of the report which is required as per the, as per the law. So. Uh, at, at some point of time, some, some things are needed, some other point of time, some other report are needed. So uh, we can just uh, switch to eQuest if it is possible for us. Uh, just a moment. Hope you are getting a, at least a uh, way ahead to how to uh, proceed for this thing. So this is office building which we have created. The schematic design result we have seen. This was for user selected. And we have been for Pirwan form.
And you are you have seen that uh, where to fill in this data of uh, simulation software here, yeah. lighting per square feet, corridor wise, lobby wise, which you have seen, uh, room wise, restroom wise, conference room wise, these lighting uh, figures. Yes, sir, here. actually, yes, sir, actually, yeah. your screen is not shared. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sorry. Let me share it. It is not being displayed. I'll close a couple of screens which is not required. Give me a minute, please. There are multiple screens which are there. Just a moment. being displayed in the shareable list. Now it must be shareable. Uh, so uh, what we have just seen that uh, in our building description, this lighting, I think this is uh, uh, occupied load by activity areas being displayed before you. So whatever we just generate information in the form of uh, reports from any of the uh, lighting design simulation software, uh, we'll just provide the information over here in the eQuest software. Uh, Semi, it, it must be visible to you now, no? occupied loads by activity area. So uh, here we've put it, we've finished it, and we'll simulate it, and we'll just get the result and divide it by the total uh, built up area, we'll get the EPI. And EPI should be uh, less than uh, within the prescribed limit of the threshold limit. So uh, this is a simulation. And this is report summary. And this is this is the result. So whatever that result divided by built up area of that particular model, that will give you EPI. And comparing with the parametric uh, analysis with the codal provision values with respect to your uh, change values, it will give you a parametric run and you can just uh, uh, reassure the EPI ratio also that should be less than one, one or less than one. So with this, we would like to end up this simulation exercise as of now. Uh, we are open for any kind of uh, uh, question answer or suggestions or any procedure to discuss with or anything which is required to be done because the code is applicable in your place and you have to start practicing and uh, see something like uh, like uh, this is ladybug tool you can go to ladybug tools and you can just see variety of information which is available over here uh, I think Ladybug Tools so, uh, page is visible to you. Can you, can anybody prompt me by unmuting himself or herself? Yes, yeah. So you see that uh, Energy Plus is a bigger software than Equest what we have seen. 
uh, once you are uh, through with the request within say six month or something, you should start practicing on the Energy Plus. So energy modeling can be done. Open Studio is also a source which can be uh, linked with the Energy Plus models. So this is also a source and usually the plugin for SketchUp. So uh, uh, outdoor comfort can be uh, generated with the help of this thing very easily. Honeybee uh, is a uh, basically a, a central place. This is also one of the softwares from where you can link up the day sim and annual daylight reporting will do. Radiance also a lighting software and uh, Therb is also thermal value calculation software that you can generate with your information. Uh, so uh, HVX sizing, resizing design and everything for, uh, um, uh, for comfort system that can be done very well over here. So uh, this is a, a basic matrices to understand that how many softwares they, they are linked up and what is the beauty of those softwares and that, that can be worked out. So uh, you can uh, refer to Leg Ladybug, but uh, some of the softwares are plugin are basically uh, paid versions or even plugins are free, but the basic uh, tools are uh, paid one. You can just have a look over here. You can just uh, keep on uh, downloading the things for trial version and everything. Many things are available, Ladybug, Honeybee, and other, other things, Butterfly, all these are available. So uh, why to use this thing and how many people are using these things? You can just work it out. Climate Consultant is also one of the free and uh, very good software. You can download it. It can be downloaded in a fraction of a second and can be understood very well once you start opening that. So once again, thank you very much for patiently listening to for the, uh, today's interactive program for the daylight simulation as well as for the envelope optimization through eQuest. We have seen from point to point, from first point to end point, that what kind of data that should be fit in, how to uh, make a model, basic model, and how to get the report in both of the softwares, both type of uh, uh, components. So uh, thank you very much once again, every one of you, though it could be a little longer exercise, but uh, uh, this is the only way out to start from somewhere scratch if somebody is not through with that. And we are always there uh, to support you in every respect and without any consideration, without any charge, without any obligation, without anything. It's a part of our duty. So feel free always for the smallest thing to any extent that uh, that, that can be uh, shared you instantaneously or within reasonable time. Thank you once again. We are open for question and session if it is there. Otherwise, we can uh, proceed for uh, further any, any other activity. Thank you very much, each one of you. So uh, I think uh, I, I am on the chat box uh, and I can type a message here and I will write it over here. It's 810-310-6076. Okay, another is uh, my email ID. WhatsApp is usually preferable these days. Available there? Who, who reads out the letters now? Who says, uh, who reads out the email these days? <laughs> and uh, uh, downloading that software that is d o uh, d o e two dot com slash uh, equest. So, yeah, yeah. And Dialux is uh, just I've shown you already. Otherwise, all links are there. Or any other information you'd like to have, uh, NBC you can download it and you can just start uh, uh, practicing for the. Uh, 11th chapter that is approach to sustainability that will be very much workable for you. Not directly, not directly, indirectly, but pumping and everything in detail that requires to be of uh, required uh, uh, efficiency. So indirectly that is there, but not the water efficiency, but the pumping efficiency itself is a uh, part of that. So unlike the uh, green building concept, the water efficiency of faucets, uh, <coughs> flow rate and everything that is not being addressed over here, or STP kind of thing that is on. It's the energy efficiency code, not the uh, uh, green building code. So uh, 
Uh, energy efficiency is subset of uh, green building. Green building has got a, uh, a standard, what is it called? Uh, what I call it, uh, this term I use that uh, food construction practice plus energy efficiency is called green building. Where ECBC is itself is a energy efficiency. Not at all, sir. If your building is facing towards, uh, if you've got a uh, hanging floor plate in south also or in any other direction, it is it is being shaded. Or suppose you are in uh, that climate, uh, suppose temperate climate, uh, uh, the the thermal comfort is already uh, achieved, or if it is naturally partly na naturally ventilated, or uh, the calculation doesn't require that you should put any any kind of uh, insulation in form of insulation. So for the double or triple or low heat coating kind of a thing. Depends on that, how much uh, uh, heat is being transferred for that particular uh, element in from which direction, from north, east, south, west. So you have to just meticulously chuck it out and whenever that is required, like what, what we do in case of a structural design, whenever the load is there, the concentrated load is there, the size of column changes and the footing sizes changes. Otherwise, you don't put uh, everything uh, same everywhere. So similar, very similarly, efficiently, you have to put the, the design for every, every uh, fenestration. So not necessary. Mm -hmm. If you go to this uh, eQuest uh, site, uh, you will find out the uh, the um, weather data file for most of the world renowned cities. For Indian cities, 62 weather data files I already shared you. Uh, and you can choose uh, any nearby city for any any other, like for Potium, there is no weather data file. You can choose for Thiruvananthapuram. It's a quite similar weather, so that can be worked out well. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of EMC Kerala, I would like to express my gratitude to all participants. Uh, I extend my gratitude to our PCBC master trainer, Mr. Jakavia, sir, for his enlightening session. He has uh, covered the envelope optimization in the morning session, and he demonstrated the same using EQ software. And then in the afternoon session, he has covered the dilating session and demonstrated the same using direct software. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for your enlightening session. And once again, I uh, thank you for everyone. Uh, th thank you, ECB, EEBSL, for uh, organizing this program and for your support. And EMC will be conducting their training programs in future, and uh, we will be in touch with you, the, all the registered participants. So we will be sharing the uh, details of future training programs with you. So. Uh, you, you are always welcome to join for these upcoming training programs. Once again, thank you. Thank you, everyone.